Hello and welcome back to Cal Radio Expanded at War. And, well, we're still at war against the Western Empire, of course. However, there is someone very specific that I'd like to eliminate. Now, I am on the character screen here no, for no particular reason, but just because I wanted there to be a bit of a reveal. And as you can see, we're now fight. Oh, actually, never mind. <laughs> we're not fighting the guy that I actually anticipated fighting. Never mind. Okay, we're just going to do a nice little auto-resolve then, I suppose. We're going to let Desporion go. We're going to take this guy prisoner, of course. And then we're going to continue onward. Now, bear in mind that obviously we want to continue leveling up our forces. We want to continue taking prisoners and everything. But of course, at the moment, I have way too many prisoners. So I will just have to let some of them go because I am currently taking every single vassal from a minor faction prisoner as well. Ah, yes, he went inside here. Okay, so I'm going to reveal who it was. It's Garios. It's Garios. He is the leader of the Western Empire. And I thought to myself, oh, yes, I would love to be able to fight him because he has an exceptional amount of combat strength at the moment. And personally, I don't want him to call for an army. Look at his, look at his combat strength. He is by himself. This is not an army. He is completely by himself right here. 400 and... Wait a minute. Did you see that? 491 sheep? No, that's wrong. I mean, obviously it doesn't show in the text box now because I let it fade away, which is a bit of a weird thing that happens. But here's the thing. Look at this. It said 491 sheep have been added, added to my inventory. But that is obviously not the case. I have only 52. Well, that's very strange, isn't it? Anyway, let's see if I can actually... Yes, we got him. We got him. Okay, fantastic. Now we can do battle with him. And I very much want to because generally, anytime we can do battle with an enemy leader, this is a great opportunity because obviously they are probably the ones that have the most influence. They're probably the ones that are going to be the most dangerous to deal with for other vassals. So us taking them on specifically... This is the best possible opportunity we're going to get. So hopefully, I will be able to maintain my HP and not die instantly, which uh, is a bit of a tall order sometimes. Anyway, let's see if I can use my Manavlion to do some damage. Nice. <laughs> oh, I love it. Oh, I love it. Obviously, it's not, not as fun as the War Razor, of course. I mean, really, what is on horseback? There's very, very few weapons that I would recommend using over a War Razor. But there are some. There are some that are going to be relatively fun to use. And of course, it all very much depends on your personal preference too. Anyway, wow, my Vlandian sharpshooter's just coming in right there. Doing massive damage. And let's see where the enemy is. Okay, they're all the way over there. So we're going to have to... Wait a minute. Is this... Oh, it's this map. Okay. Yeah, it's this map. All right, we're now starting to get into a wonderful position here. I got shot in the foot, amusingly enough. Yeah, I got shot in the foot, but that's okay, because we're now going to get off our mount and do a little bit of damage from range. Now, bear in mind, I obviously did not... Um... Oh, actually, wait a minute. I'm, I haven't reached that point yet, have I? Mm. No, I haven't reached that point. Okay, never mind, never mind. I was about to say that I didn't take the uh, the skill that actually gives me the ability to use my crossbow or use any crossbow on horseback. But do you, do you hear that? I'm going to shut up for a second so you can hear the crossbows firing. Well, there we go. That seems like an absolutely amazing, amazing victory right there. Okay, so yeah, we literally lost zero units because my Vlandian sharpshooters were literally capable of dealing so much damage that they killed 164 of the enemy's troops. 
that's in, that's insanity. That really is. Wow. So yeah, that's also the reason why I wanted to get on that little that little hillside right there because I was initially thinking to myself, oh, you know what? Let's just go and meet them across the sort of flat area. And I was like, oh, and you know what? I've got a better idea. And so I decided to go over to the hillside. And well, as you can quite clearly tell, that really made a huge difference. Oh, hello. A new helmet for me. Very nice indeed. That helmet is actually a lot better than what I was using. It gives me five extra armor, which is always good. And now we're going to see what I can do here about this. So I'm just going to take a bunch of this and there we go. We'll donate the rest. All right, so we are now outside Elvania Castle. And I'm thinking to myself, maybe we want to take it, or maybe I want to go over to, I think Lagata is actually still, yeah, Lagata is actually neutral, hilariously enough, because it is currently under control by a rebel faction. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. I might have to help out here. Ooh, I'm not entirely sure what's gonna go, what's gonna go down. Oh, we're de what really? We're declaring war against the Batanians. Okay, I am going to say yes to this because Durthart doesn't like that, and I'd like to reduce my relation with him a little bit. So let's see if I can uh, maybe do that. And we're also going to be increasing our relation with Mr. Heckard right there, and his um, and his clan, which is going to make a pretty big difference. And I would very much hope that they're going to go into Ortesia soon. Uh, oh, oh, no, they're actually just doing a field battle. I'm not into... I mean, look at this, okay? The combat strength of my allies is so incredibly large that even with the extraneous vassals along the outside here, this really doesn't do anything. This doesn't do anything at all. This is basically negligible additions to the fight. Anyway, I'm going to go in and help. As you can see, we've got 1,000 versus 1,200, but the combat strength has such a major disparity here. There is really nothing the enemy can do, or at least I think so. But this is going to give me a very good opportunity to maybe head in, maybe do a little bit of extra damage with my crossbow, maybe get some more, more skill ups and everything like that. Because you can see here, where is that? Where is the ability to use it on horseback? There. There it is, mounted crossbowman. You can reload any crossbow on horseback. Yes, I will very much look forward to getting that, but it is quite a bit away. We need 175, and at the moment I only have three focus points in crossbow as it is. Anyway, let's just take a quick look at the, at the perks here. Increase the morale of each tier one to three troops by 10%. And yeah, I'm going to go for that one because it also reduces the upkeep of ranged troops in the government settlements garrison um, by 20%, which I think is pretty good. And if it does, as I say, do that thing where, you know, if the player character owns something, then, then they are by default the governor and so on. So all of those governor based perks are going to make a difference in that respect. So I obviously went over this in a previous episode. If you missed that, then, well, you should probably go back and see that. Anyway, cavalry troop volunteering rate is increased by 30% in the towns your clan govern. That might be kind of useful, but I don't really want too many cavalry. And prisoners in your party are 50% less likely to escape. I will be taking that. There we go. And now we can go into the fight. Now bear in mind, the Western Empire is not really that strong in terms of their combat strength. We've taken a look at their combat strength already from a uh, faction perspective because if we take a look at their faction overview on the diplomacy screen it is not looking very good for them and i'm kind of surprised that they are launching such an attack when it's pretty clear that they are outnumbered outgunned i mean even without me here i'm pretty sure my forces would have been able to achieve victory hmm i mean i think so but maybe Maybe the advantage would just have not been as large, you know? So maybe they would have been able to give them a, a good run for their money. But I, I think in general, maybe not. Maybe not, you know? I think maybe it would have been a pretty easy victory for them. But we'll, we'll obviously find that out as time goes on. And hopefully I'm not going to get killed here as well. Got to be very careful about not getting myself murdered. And I would like to get my crossbowman into a fantastic... 
um, fantastic formation here. Bear in mind, however, I actually don't have a huge amount of troops on the battlefield. I don't think. Let me actually just take a quick look. Um, I have... Oh, no, I actually do. I have 34 Vlandian sharpshooters, which is obviously not that much. I mean, 34 is good, but I think we had about 60, maybe 70 on the field before. So obviously that makes a bit of a, a bit more of a difference. Anyway, I'm going to put them into a loose formation. going to tell these guys to charge. going to tell the cavalry to charge, that is. And maybe we'll try and do some damage to some of the enemy's cavalry. That's generally what I like to do nowadays. I like to face the enemy cavalry because usually they do give our forces a bit of trouble. And so if I can eliminate them myself, then at least it kind of levels the playing field slightly. Unfortunately, those of them with shields equipped... And the ones that actually raise them in time, they do give me a bit of a bit of trouble. Yeah, they do give me a bit of trouble. So let me see if I can maybe do some damage here. The Manevlion, a bit too fast for me. A bit too fast. My timing is always really, really bad when attacking with this thing. But we are still nevertheless able to take out a couple of units. That's probably also something we should take into account. Any single time I'm able to eliminate a mount, and I'm talking about the horse specifically here, not even the mounted unit uh, riding it, but uh, generally any single time I'm able to do that, it actually does make a pretty significant difference to how effective my own forces are going to be. So even if I am able to just, you know, hit the horse or something, usually I don't really like doing that in general because... One, it doesn't give me any experience. Two, it's basically just a pointless exercise. You know, it doesn't, doesn't benefit me in any way. But it is going to help our forces to eliminate the rider. Because if I'm unable to deal with the rider myself, then, of course, they will probably be able to. You know, they can swarm them. They can maybe shoot them. They can do something like that. And it's going to be a lot easier to take them down because they are no longer as mobile being mounted cavalry. So... That's obviously something to bear in mind, but yeah, it is just one of those things that I don't particularly like doing. But we are so damaging with our perk selections against horses right now. So even if I were to use my polearm regularly, I can probably do around 300 to 500 damage every single time I hit a horse. And that is almost surely going to get someone off their mount which is obviously great i mean that's really really good for my forces it's, it's great for support it basically makes it possible for us to be a little bit more active in the fight because it means that many of the enemy's cavalry will think twice about sticking around because if all of them are you know scattered to the wind a lot of them running on foot and everything it makes a huge difference to their to their resolve, to their combat resolve. And as you can see, look at that. Our forces literally only lost a grand total of 12 units. The rest of them will be requiring a little bit of rest and relaxation, I suppose. But they will be getting back on their feet. 
All right, let's just uh, let a bunch of these guys go. Take that one prisoner. Let this one go. Who's this? Aha, this guy. I will be taking prisoner as well, as well as this guy. Uh, she can go, I believe. Uh, he can go as well. Uh, wow, there are so many. There are literally so many right here. Company of the Golden Boar. We will be taking him prisoner. This guy, yeah. See, now, this is also, in my opinion, the reason why this was so easy. Because there were so many minor factions in this, uh, in this particular battle. And you can see here, look at how many vassals I have taken prisoner. <laughs> I mean, here's the thing. I would love, right now, I would absolutely love to execute every single one of these vassals. Because... In my opinion, minor factions really, I mean, they're annoying, right? They're, they're annoying, but they don't really do much, you know? They, they are kind of a non-factor most of the time. And while I find that a bit disappointing, because obviously I feel like minor factions should have a much greater role to play, they don't really do much, and they're just kind of a nuisance, and they generally tend to prey upon you or prey upon any of your vassals or friends or you know, your caravans or whatever, when you are weakened. And they generally tend to do that quite often. So that's obviously something to bear in mind. But, you know, that that's how it goes sometimes. That's how it goes. Anyway, I'm going to take the Legendary Slayer right there. We'll just let these uh, recruits go. And we're going to have to let everyone else go as well, unfortunately. But thankfully, because this is an allied battle, and we are helping out some people, they do have the ability to take those prisoners themselves so i don't have to worry so much about all of those prisoners going to waste basically anyway let's uh let's take all this and we'll take the most um most expensive stuff as well because there's quite a bit of it so we might as well eh and then we'll just take the rest There we go. And do we have anything else here that I really want to take? I mean, generally, yeah, there is some stuff, but... I mean, do I really want to go to the hassle of taking all of this? Do I have a herd deficit? Yes, I do have a herd deficit at the moment. That could be because of the amount of animals that I have. I assume that that, that is indeed the case. But anyway, 19,000 experience we will be donating to our party and hopefully that's going to level them up quite nicely. Anyway, there you go. Now, hopefully, uh, they're not going to continue. Are you serious? You're not going to continue the siege at Ortizia, you imbecile? Ah, uh, why is he not doing that? That is very disappointing. Oh, no, oh, oh, no, no, he's doing it. Oh, oh, maybe not, maybe not. Oh, okay, well, whatever the case, if they decide to... Oh, yes, they're, they're doing it again. Okay, fantastic, that's great. Really, really pleased to see that. Okay, well... Whatever the case, I am going to be selling everyone back for 43,000. Let's go into the trade screen here as well. Oh, they really don't have a huge amount, do they? No, they do not have a huge amount at all. I'm going to swap this helmet. Uh, she does not have any shoulder pads or a cape or anything like that. So we should probably give her some, right? That would probably make sense. Let me see if I have something good. This is okay, I guess. Oh, she looks Oh, she looks very cool in a cape, eh? I think she looks really cool in a cape. Okay. Well, I mainly came here because I wanted to get rid of my sheep and my cows. There we go. Okay, fantastic. We still have 920 in consumable items, but my herd herd deficit has completely disappeared now, as you can see. So, I'm very pleased about that. All right. So, now let's take a look at the current situation. Okay, yeah, the Batanians are basically done. And obviously, as I said to you before, all of these castles and things up here, they are ripe for the taking. They are ripe for the taking because I literally did not put any units in there. I mean, Foreign Castle, I believe, is the only one that is going to really be um, something that we might need to be a bit a bit wary of because I've ha I, I had that fee for the longest time and maybe the improved garrison um, trainers and things did some good work there but everywhere else no way you can you can say goodbye to that so we can now go over and we can pretty much 
just take all that stuff and then claim it for ourselves and our trades that I've obviously done over the course of the last couple of episodes will now be you know paying dividends it will be really really good anyway I'm just going to sell all of this for 44,000 sell all of this and then we're going to get 63,000 almost 64,000 total let's take a look at foreign castle 287 in the garrison here okay not going to go for that um, just yet. I would actually like to take a look at some of the other places first. Because, yeah, this is great. Look at Kulstad. Kulstad has 182. I mean, literally. 182 here. Uh, oh, oh, actually, they don't even have that. They just literally have 87 because there was someone else in here, I believe. Like, there, there was a vassal or something, maybe? I have no clue. But you can see here, there's literally 87. Okay, um... I think we're just, I think we're not even going to bother constructing anything. We're literally just going to go in with siege ladders. I don't think there's really any point in me constructing anything because 87 units. I think we're going to have a very easy time of things here. Let's just level up my forces real fast just to get them prepared for the inevitable assault. And I would like to do it in the daytime if at all possible as well. There we go. All right. So we're going to go for a nice little fast, fast speed up here. I'm going to hopefully be able to get inside as well. So let me actually just do that. I'm going to get off my mount as well. It's way too difficult to use a mount in super fast mode. And I'm hopefully going to be able to use my crossbow a bit. Because here's the thing. If you hit someone with a weapon of any kind, you are going to gain experience in that weapon, obviously. I mean, that's the way it works. That's the way the leveling system works. But what I'm trying to get at here is if, the, if you only hit them... You're not really... Uh, what, a, what a wonderful shot that was. If you only hit them, you're not really going to do much. But if you actually kill them, you're going to get so much more experience and it really makes a huge difference. So generally, if you are able to hit a stationary target like I was able to there and missed twice before... Yes, let's not talk about that any further. Thank you. Oh, yes, indeed. But the point is, if you're able to kill them, you'll gain so much more experience than if you would have just hit them once. So that's the reason why going into siege attacks and things like that, you know, these kinds of things, are really, really useful for leveling up a particular weapon. Uh, yes, those times when my own units are blocking me and it's very difficult for me to actually get a clear shot on the enemies. Oh well, never mind. I guess I'm just going to zoom zoom things up and uh, we'll we'll just claim, you know, just claim the town and then we'll move on. Because let's face it, we've got a whole bunch to take right now. We've got a whole bunch. Okay, let's take all the prisoners. I will be uh, See now here's the thing. Will I be claiming this? I think I will claim this just purely because I actually want to do a, a trade, you see. I actually want to do a trade of something down in the southern territory of Landia. So if I have a town that I could potentially trade, maybe I... Mm, actually, you know what? Maybe it would be a better idea for me to trade for something like Oxhall. Yeah, something like Oxhall would be the most advantageous. So who actually owns that? Is it is it Ingaltha, actually? No, it's Belgia. He loves us, but he is a bad personality type. So he probably will not be too pleased about this. Okay, well, let's just take a quick look at this. Okay, oh, the loyalty is absolute absolute garbage. It is absolute garbage. Okay, not entirely sure what I'm even supposed to do here, to be honest about this. I, th I suppose I'll just stay here for a little bit of time because my, my parade skill will hopefully make a little difference, maybe? Because parade obviously increases town or fief loyalty by five every single day you stay here and that really makes a huge difference to um stabilizing this particular territory but who knows who knows maybe it's not actually going to make that much difference oh there we go it's already making a huge difference look at that 19 we have 19 up from what was it five <laughs> five or six or something like that oh Huge army of the Vlandians was defeated. Well, that's obviously not very good. Gonna just leave here real fast because I'd like to speak to Mr. Belgir. Actually, did he get eliminated? Was he the was he one of them to get eliminated? Let me actually just take a quick look. Because if that is indeed the case, then I won't be able to... Ugh. It was him. 
Okay, well, that's uh, that's somewhat unfortunate, isn't it? Yeah, so my messenger will not be able to get to him in time, unfortunately. Oh, well. Never mind, never mind. I guess I will just have to deal with it. Oh, look at that. Oh, yes, we've got another situation on our hands right there. Technically, it's not on our hands. It's on Melodia's hands. And he has just had a rebellion rise up in Varcheg itself. And so we don't even need to worry about Varcheg now because the rebels have taken it over and Melodia is no doubt, or shall we say one of the Batanians, is probably going to be heading up there at some point and they will be attempting to take it back. And when they do take it back, we're then going to swoop in and try to take advantage of the situation because obviously they're not going to have a huge garrison in there at that point and it's going to be a lot simpler for us to take it. So hopefully we'll be able to do that. Yeah, I was actually wanting to shoot someone as they walked by, but apparently they uh, they were too sneaky. They were way too sneaky right there. All right, so this is actually... Um, where is this again? Is this Firth Castle? I think this is Firth Castle or something along those lines. And, oh, this is bad, actually. This is really, really bad. Oh, thankfully it is a wonderful, wonderful layout. Oh, 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 oh I love fighting with this weapon in close quarters situations. It is so, so fun. Ah, uh, don't fall into the, the little hole there. That would have been pretty bad. Ah, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump down here onto the hay bale. Thank you very much. Thankfully, the AI doesn't really know how to follow in those kinds of situations. So you're going to have an easier time getting away. Well, there you go. That was super simple, super fast, and we have now reclaimed our old fief. So now here's the thing. This is a really good way for us to continue expansion of our very own territory, because here's the thing. Even if, even if I decide not to keep any of these and I trade them away, if I trade them away to enemies, you know, if I trade them away to enemy vassals somewhere, you know, in the world, it doesn't really matter, because I can just take these back really, really fast. As soon as that faction declares war, like the Batanians have just now, I can pretty much come back any time, and I can do something about it. Unfortunately, as you can see right here, the loyalty is also extremely bad in this particular fief, so we're going to have to do something about that too. Now, that means that I'll have to stay here for a little bit of time, which, of course, is a little bit of a thorn in our side, to be honest, because if we do have to deal with some kind of rebellion, then that's obviously not very good. However, well, needs must and everything, you know, you're going to need to take things and change the dynamic of the territory and the world to be able to progress and make changes to it, because otherwise, if you don't do that, well, everything's going to remain the same. It's going to be static and stagnant, and you're not going to get anywhere. So, these kinds of things have to happen. Anyway, Vashorki is actually picking up a, a sword for once, and he's actually going over to Tackle Castle, and he's besieging it at the moment, which is obviously going to be great, because that means that he is going to expand his very own little piece of territory right there, which is just across the small little river that we have between us and our two little territories and he has Balgard already. So this actually does encourage him to expand his territory as well. Unfortunately, he doesn't seem to have the resolve to finish Takor Castle's siege, which is a little bit strange to me because I personally don't think that there are that many units in uh, Takor Castle. Yeah, as you can see, there's literally 122. And in Vashorki's army, he has 500. So I have no idea what he's doing. 
but apparently he's having some issues with it. Anyway, let's take a look at Firth, uh, Firth Castle's uh, loyalty real quick. Uh, it's, it's at 16. All right. I guess what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to alternate between Firth Castle and Cool Start. And I'm going to have to stabilize their loyalty before we go anywhere else. So that's going to take me a little bit of time. So what I'm going to say is I'm going to end this episode off here. And next time we're going to attempt to expand even further with the Batanians' help. And I'm going to try and do a couple more trades. It should be pretty interesting. I thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.